Hey, in this video I will explain everything about the Visual Browser. Visual Browser is a Max for Live device for Ableton Live that lets you organize your favorite effects instruments or basically anything to easily load them into your project without endless searching. If you open up the browser you can find some extremely useful controls in the top left corner. You can define where the browser's top should be. And the size of the cars. You can make them real big if that's what you like. Or really small. You can change the car's position too. You can left align them. Keep them in the center. Or distribute them horizontally. At the top, the four green buttons are your main categories, effects, instruments, track presets, and user. Each main category can have as many subcategories as you wish, and inside the subcategories you'll find your cars. When you press on these cars, the device will open the built-in browser in Ableton Live and search for the same thing that you named the car, and then it'll load it into your project. The download includes three things, the Max for Live device itself, and you should put that into your user library, the documentation, and I would advise you to read it. Very educational. And finally, a folder called Visual Browse. Now take a quick look inside that. These four folders represent your main categories, and you find your subcategories inside them. That's where you put the pictures for the cars. You can also see these VB files with the same name as the folders, I will tell you more about them later. You need to put this Visual Browser folder directly into your Documents directory. When you first load the device into your project, you need to key or MIDI map the open button, so you will be able to load things into any track you want. If you want to customize the browser to your liking, first you need to open the Advanced View with this little button. Here you'll find the Editor. It's important to back up your existing setup every time before you jump in editing it. Luckily, it's really easy to do. To create a backup, just press the Create Backup button. It will copy your Visual Browser folder and create a new folder called Visual Browser Backup. As you can see, it's just like the original. Now, if I delete my MIDI subcategory, I don't have to be afraid that it's lost forever. Look, there's no MIDI folder and MIDI VB file here anymore. I quickly delete the modulation subcategory too. But if I press the revert from backup button, boom, magic. Okay, let's move on. In the first part of the editor, you can select your four main categories. It will reveal all its subcategories under it. I'm selected the track presets, and now I'm going to add a new subcategory into it. Let's call it Vocal Presets. Now I'll jump back to Finder just to show you that it created two new things, a folder and a VB file with the same name. Let me add some more subcategories. Name this one Bass Presets. Now press the Add Category button. And just like that, you have a new subcategory. As you can see, I separated the two words Bass and Presets with an underscore instead of a space. That's because you can add multiple things at once, if you separate them with a comma and a space. I'm gonna add two more just to show you. Now if we jump back to the browser, you can see the subcategories we added. They are currently empty. Let's see those VB files real quick. When you add something with the editor, it will get stored in these VB files. Okay. Now jump into the second part of the editor where you can add your cards. I previously saved some effect racks called Amazing Vocal and one called Bad Vocal. So I'm gonna add two cards into the Vocal Presets subcategory called that. As you can see, they are immediately showed up inside the VB file.
preferably you should name the cards accurately so it'll be the first search result in Ableton Live's browse. But sometimes it ain't easy. If I try to search for the utility device, it'll show up as the second search result. So if I add a card called utility, and then I load it into my project, it'll load the wrong one. Let's fix it real quick. Next to the box where you write in the card's name, here's another box where you can specify which search result the visual browser should look for when you click on the card. I'm gonna type in two. Then I press the replace selected card button. Now if I try again, it should do exactly what I want. Here we go. As you can see, now it loaded the second search result. Here's another thing. You can move the cars and the subcategories up or down with these buttons. They will show up in the browser in the order you specify them. Of course you can use any image with any cards, you just need to put a PNG with the same name as the card into the corresponding folder. Now I'll quickly rename this stunning picture and then I'll drop it into the right place. In this case it's inside visual browser slash track presets slash vocal presets. Here you go. Okay now quickly refresh the browser to check it out, and that's it. Don't be confused. There's only one card here, but I already deleted the bad vocal card. It was really bad. Okay, that's everything. I hope you're gonna love this device as much as I do. See you later.